This is a CT scan for a 34-year-old lady who had previous bariatric surgery with gastric stapling and a gastroenterostomy, leaving a gastric remnant connected to the duodenum. She unfortunately was then suffering from some nutritional deficiency due to the gastroenterostomy bypassing the duodenum. I was asked to place a gastrostomy into this effectively isolated gastric remnant so that she could have some nutritional supplements via it. So here you can see the stomach with some oral contrast via an NG tube and there's the gastric staple line and this is the gastric remnant that I need to get the gastrostomy into. Obviously the NG tube's in the other part of the stomach so it's not possible to use it to distend this isolated part of the stomach. And as we come down here you can see this is our window just to the midline just adjacent to the liver edge we've got colon on this side and there's a bit more colon inferiorly into the right with hindsight my technique might have been slightly different later on in the procedure um, but we'll talk about that just when we get to it so let's get on with the video so we've got liver here we've got colon here as we come across towards the right hand side we're going to see distal stomach and duodenum there so that's our window it really is a very small window and I'm going to put some local anesthetic into your skin so it'll be a sharp scratch right so we're just going to change to a spinal needle and we'll get a little bit deeper with that and down towards the duodenum bit of pushing this might sting a little bit hopefully not so we're just under the edge of the liver there Is that okay now? Yeah. Good. So what we've got here, and we're going to try and puncture the duodenum with this gold stick. So we've got a 22 gauge needle, and then we've got the three part system that we're going to slide in. So we've got the metal inner stalette, we've then got a, a, a plastic stiffener, and then the outer tapered sheath. And it's quite a smooth taper between all these parts, so I'm hoping these will slide in very easily if we can access the duodenum with a 22 gauge needle. Right, that's the plan, okay? It's quite a, a bendy needle, this. So it's quite hard to make it go exactly where you want it. Okay. Just about, we're just on the wall there, so we're just going to try and puncture into the lumen. And I think that's the tip of the needle. Looks, looks like it it's, could be luminal or could be in the mucosa. I'm just going to take it a little bit further. We're now going to screen and I'm just going to see if I can get the wire to go. What I did last time was we put contrast in and we ended up making a little dissection channel that the wire went into, so I'm very wary of that. So we're just gonna start with a wire and see if that goes. So there's the tip of our needle, which hopefully is in the right place. So we've just got this wire now. I'm just gonna very gently advance this and see if we can get this to go anywhere at all. So I'm just pulling back very slightly. Right, I'm not convinced about that. Could you store that fluoro, please? So I'm going to put the stilet back into my needle. I'm just going to try and advance that again a little bit further. The other thing we can do is inject saline and see if we can create a lumen without uh, causing a pacification everywhere, which would be useful. So there's the tip of the needle there. probably just into the lumen or into the posterior wall. So what I'm going to do now is take that stiletto back. We're going to try very gently a little bit of contrast. I'm not going to screw that on so I don't want to displace my needle. I'm going to steady my needle with my hand. I'm just going to screen that. And 
that looks like it's just in the mucosa, so I'm just going to pull it back a bit. Okay, we're going to have another look with ultrasound and see if we can pull it back a little bit further. So I'm just moving my needle very slightly. Right, just going to try the wire again there now. I'd like to see it passing across to the left side if we can, rather than the right. So it's just a repetitive process to try and get into that lumen. And of course, the lumen is collapsed. That's part of the problem. See, so when we go a little bit more towards the left side, you get the impression of some gas. If we can get into that gas, we know that gas will be in the lumen. So I'm just going to redirect my needle slightly and come back in again. Just on the edge of it. So I just need to come back a bit inferiorly. That looks luminal now to me. So I'm going to be really careful not to displace this at all. And we're going to go straight for some contrast. Right, that's luminal. Okay, excellent. Certainly going somewhere. Right, so what I want to try and do is create a little bit of space in here. So I'm just going to carry on injecting contrast. Need to confirm that this is, yes, and this is going into stomach remnant, which is where we want it, which is excellent. The difficulty now is to try and get the wire to follow that. So we'll go back for that. So I'm just aware my needle is against the posterior wall, so I've got to try and pull it back and give it room to work without just pulling it out altogether. And that looks very encouraging. Just redirecting my needle now to try and give it some support to head in that direction. And it looks like it's pushing stomach mucosa away from me, which is good. Now that looks good, but we've been in this position once before and we were actually submucosal. So what I need to do now is a cone beam CT and check that wire is where we think it is. So I'm going to leave my needle there as well to give us extra pacification. So that's all the contrast we put in with the wire. So what we need to do is see the rest of the stomach and make sure we're in the right part of the stomach. So there's our NG tube, which is a little bit short. That's one part of the stomach. And this is the other part that we're in. So we are in a separate part of the stomach, which is what we wanted to be sure of, and that's coming through into the duodenum. So my wire's in, the contrast is in. Let's look at that axially. So NG tube. That part of the stomach. And that's coming down. And, yeah, and the contrast is going through already into the duodenum. So we know we're in the remnant part of the stomach. There's our wire coming in. We're in the stapled off bit of stomach. And the rest of the stomach is up here. NG tube coming down and that's into, that's the, that's the part of the stomach that has the gastroenterostomy. So that's an astomose to small bowel. And then this is the posterior bit of stomach which is being walled off that we're in. And that's connected to a duodenum. So that's fine. Right, okay, so what, now what I need to do is get the rest of this galt set to track over this wire into this remnant part of the stomach. If I get it onto the wire. So there's going to be some pushing. Okay. Thank you, that's fine. So now I've got it to this point, I'm going to hold the metal bit because that, of course, will not go around the corner and we're going to rotate the rest of it, keeping my wire and the metal bit tight. I'm doing lots of rotation to try and make it slide forwards. The more rotation, the better. And it's just trying to buckle. It doesn't really want to go forward. Could you get me a four French vascular dilator, please? And we'll just see if we can get this to go over this wire. Yeah. What I don't want to do is buckle my wire, because once the wire is buckled, we'll be back to square one. 
This full French dilator, I'm hoping, will go. Let's just take that back. So a bit of pulling and pushing again. Mm -hmm. The other thing we can try is a micropuncture sat. Um, I'm not sure if we've got one long enough. So a bit of pushing again. Again, this doesn't really want to track in. It's just going to pull our wire out. So, right, so what I'll try this time is I will try this gold stick just with the inner two bits. So that's the metal bit and the nicely tapered plastic inner stiffener. And then we'll just advance that over the metal bit and once we've got that into the stomach, we can exchange for a stiffer, more supportive wire. So, let's just see. Thanks, don't open it, thanks. Okay, so a bit of pushing again. So we've got down to there, we now need to get around that corner. And actually, it's gone. Okay, so that's gone into the stomach, excellent. So, that's gone in very nicely. So now what we can do is we can take this out, put some contrast in, confirm our position, and change for a much more supportive wire. So could I have a V18, please? Uh, as short as possible, please. So we're in the stomach there, so I'm happy with that. So this is a V18 control wire, which has got a short floppy tip and it then is very supportive. So we're going to push this all the way into the stomach. And we get plenty of wire in, which gives it lots of margin for error. Right, now we're going to reassemble the gold stick. Okay, you hold the wire. Right, let me take the wire now. That's it from here. So a bit of pushing again. And this time it's gone in very easily. I'm now just going to leave the outer bit in and you can see the radio opaque marker at the end, so we're well into the stomach. We're gonna leave our wire in just for the moment. We'll leave that as our safety wire. So we're now going to take that off. And could I have an Amplat super stiff wire, please? Thank you. Okay, so I should be able to get this alongside this wire into the stomach. So we then have two wires in the stomach. So now we've got a stiff, Amplat super stiff into the stomach and we can withdraw this. I wonder if we can get this in without a T fastener. I think we can. Problem is I've got no room to put a gastropexy in because there's no access to get out the stomach to do it. So I think we're going to try and put a 12 French in without a gastropexy, inflate the balloon and pull it back which should be technically possible. And we're going to leave this in as a safety wire, okay? So, we're gonna to need to dilate this up bit by bit. So, I need a six millimeter anti-plasty balloon, and we'll need that 16 French plastic dilator, and we'll need the 12 French, oh, it was an 18, sorry. And then we'll need the dual GT tube. Right, okay, so we'll go for the angioplasty balloon on the 035 now, please. We're then, I'm just going to take this out. We're then going to follow that with that 18 French dilator. You need to take that off. And then we'll go for the 12 French dual GT tube. Okay, so a bit of pushing. Okay, so we want to get this across the mucosa there. Let's have a syringe to inflate, please. Just going to bring that back a little bit more. There, that must be across it now. That's across the wall there. And store that, please. Going to deflate that balloon. And keep our wire, plenty of wire in. And we'll now go for the bigger dilator, please, the 18 French. we we'll just take that off. Okay, so quite a lot of pushing, okay? Just trying to keep that angle aiming 
up into the stomach and that's gone really nicely. Yeah. Just going to take that out, keeping our safety wire in as well. Let's have the dual GT tube, please. Yeah. yeah, it's ready to go on. Because the four was quite a tight fit, actually, so I don't think even a five would go. Right, so if you can now feed that on to the Amplat Super Stiff, put a little bit of gel on there. I'm going to keep my wire tight. We're going to push and rotate. It's just buckled, it hasn't gone in. So I need to make sure. I'm just rotating it to try and get it to go. No, it's not going to go. Right, let's have that 18 French dilator back, please. So a bit more pushing, sorry. Right, so we'll have that 20 French on, please, in a moment. One, one moment, one moment. Safety wire is pretty much out actually. Hang on, let's see. It is. That safety wire is out. You can get rid of that. Okay, bit of pushing now. Okay, that's gone very easily that time. Just store that fluoro, please. Okay, let's have a balloon, inflate the balloon, please, with a Miller Contrast 4 mils of water. Okay, store that fluoro please. So that looks in a good position, so what I'm going to do now is just take that bit out, take the dilator out, we're then going to pull the dual GT back. Now, the only problem with this dual GT is there's a possibility we could occlude the antrum with the balloon. So what we might do is just leave it forward like that and see if it'll stay forward. All right, and at this point the wire can come out and we'll do a Dyna CT. So the other tube we could put in here would be a 12 French locking pigtail, which would, does not have a balloon and they, then it wouldn't occlude the gastric outflow. So that's, a, that's an alternative if this doesn't work. We can just change it over wire. There's our tract all the way down, avoiding the liver, through into the distal antrum, proximal duodenum, and then the balloon in the body of the stomach. Let's just see that in a different plane. There it is coronally, and that looks to be in a good position as it is. But you can see if this balloon migrates distally, it will occlude the gastric outflow. And if we find that's the problem, we can change this for a 12 French locking pigtail catheter, uh, which would all not occlude it. So let's just check our tract all the way in here. Uh, very close to the edge of the liver, but I know I've missed it on ultrasound. So that's just partial voluming. And we can look at that axially. Very, very close. Okay. Right, we're done.